Hello and welcome to another episode of AWS Bytes, the weekly show where we talk about AWS and answer questions in, in around about five minutes. Uh, I'm Owen and we're joined by Luciano again. And before we get started, make sure you give us a follow and subscribe so you can be notified when the next episode goes live. And today we've got a different kind of, kind of a question um, focused on something we didn't talk about before, which is Amplify. And the question is, what can you do with Amplify Studio? So I think we maybe did touch on Amplify once or twice, just in passing. Maybe when we were talking about static hosting and mm-hmm. uh, cloud formation versus console. But let's let's t- dive into Amplify Studio a little bit more because we had an announcement at reInvent recently and it was about Amplify Studio. Um, but maybe it's best to start with a bit of a history of Amplify and what else Amplify does. What do you, what, what, how would you describe it, AWS Amplify? Yeah. yeah, Amplify is an interesting product because uh, I think it's a little bit of a shift from AWS in many ways. Like in general, in AWS, I feel that you have always like very low control and you have to understand all the nitty gritty details. So it has been like always a little bit of a challenge for many types of developer to come and use AWS because they need to kind of uh, approach everything at a very low level and then build up from there. So Amplify is a shift because they, they try to give you like an easier environment to build applications. And I have a feeling that they are targeting primarily front-end developers because front-end is, has been really like the main thing that you still have to build on your own. Mm-hmm. And they try to abstract everything else to make your life easier. So that, that's sure. why I feel that front-end developers are the target users for this product. Mm-hmm. And the idea, I suppose, is that AWS wants to give front-end developers all the other capabilities that they need to build a fully-fledged application without having to know things like CI/CD or, I don't know, cloud formation or yeah. how to create user pools, incognito, because all these things are nicely abstracted for you from Amplify. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's got a few uh, different so, features, hasn't it? Like, it, um, there's a few different ways to get started with it. So mm-hmm. I know that there's... There's an Amplify CLI, and I think when we when it started, you had the Amplify SDK in the CLI. What other parts do you have? Yeah, so you mentioned the CLI, you mentioned the SDK, so a client library that you can use yeah. either in a mobile, because you can build mobile and uh, web projects, so you will have right, yeah. uh, SDKs in, in both environments. Uh, but other components are, for instance, the, an integration with uh, your Git repository, wherever that is, doesn't have yep. to be necessarily in AWS. Mm-hmm. And that will automatically create a CI CD pipeline for you. So you can mm-hmm. you That's basically get Git yeah. ops by, by default. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. And uh, the the new thing that was announced recently is Amplify Studio, which is I would say kind of a UI and more yeah, UI friendly environments where you can do many of these things in a kind of more clicky clicky way. Uh, for instance, you can create data models by just clicking in a UI and defining all your fields and you can select the constraints and relationship between maybe field from a table with fields in another table. And then at the end, when you just click save, that is going to provision a DynamoDB table for you. It's going to provision GraphQL APIs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. to access this data. So Amplify Studio is like, okay, I don't know anything about how to provision all these different things, but I can easily explore these concepts and they are very friendly for me to create things and deploy them. Yeah, I can um, imagine with, with, with all of these things, if you're building them from scratch, like you said, AWS, if you usually operate at a low level, it requires a lot of expertise. And if you look at the feature list on Amplify and the level of abstraction it provides, it's giving you authentication and data and file storage, serverless APIs with GraphQL or just REST. And then it gives you messaging, mm-hmm. analytics, push notifications, geolocation, and even like ML features like uh, prediction, predictions, uh, predictive analytics, and AR and VR support, which I, I don't know if I'll ever use it, but it's, it's interesting that it's there. Um, Building all these things yeah, yourself, and, and, and I think they they recently also announced like a storage abstraction. So probably, mm-hmm. yep, you'll get more and more support for for applications that require I don't know users to upload files or to manage 
I don't know, content for users that maybe will store normally in S3 without mm -hmm. having to know all the nuances of S3 and uploads and all these things. I'm just thinking about the amount of time I've spent building these things manually from mm -hmm. the, I suppose, raw AWS components. And of course, it's really useful to know how all these things fit together. But if you're starting from scratch with AWS, the, I can imagine the lead time to getting all of these things up and running and understanding them is going to be many, many months re realistically. So if, if Amplify lets you get started in hours uh, to build this basic capability, that's I can certainly see the extraction, uh, the um, the attraction of that. And mm -hmm. so is is there is there an AWS Amplify service? So is it doing anything special that you can't do in those raw services? Uh, I would probably say for the most part, no, meaning that at the end of the day, Amplify is managing a CloudFormation stack for you. So if okay. you're really curious, you can just go in your CloudFormation panel and see exactly like what are all the resources that have been provisioned by your interactions with Amplify, either from the CLI or the Amplify uh, studio. Mm -hmm. um, so there is really no magic to it if you want. But it's still nice that you can get a lot of things done very quickly. Like if you would have to do all these thing, use, things using infrastructure as code, probably it will take you much longer to ship anything to production. So I suppose it's more of a question of how much control do you want to have or mm -hmm. compared to like, do you just want to build something simple and, and ship it quickly? So I, I don't know. What do you think in terms of... Um, maybe like um what kind of use cases would you would you use it for yeah what kind of use cases uh this is a good question so i can if, if i look at the way it's built data models uh, authentication storage as the fundamental components you can imagine using it for any kind of crud app where you want users to sign up and log in and create something you know and that could be uploading images creating filling out forms adding entries so basically crud apps and everything is kind of a cms or a crud app at its core it feels like most applications are mm -hmm. um, but if you don't have very very complex business logic at the back end i think it seems like a reasonably good fit and you want to get started pretty quickly um so i think there's a couple of there's a couple of questions with stuff like this. You know, we've um, I learned over over time to be a little bit fearful of high level abstractions in case you know they leak eventually, or you're trying to you're trying to move forward and ultimately you want to drop it down to the low level components. And do, does it make it possible? And is it a reversible process? So can you get the best of both worlds? Can you continue to use Amplify and keep customizing those components at the back end? And from what I've seen with Amplify, yes and no is the answer to that. So you can like add existing, you can add custom cloud formation, for example, which is nice. You can incorporate existing CDK components. That's a new enough feature. And you can also mm -hmm. eject or, or export the application to CDK and incorporate it into a CDK pipeline. So it's, 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 it's interesting to watch it evolve because I was, as Amplify, the story has emerged. I've have been a bit skeptical, but I, I'm kind of surprised that it's keeping a re a re good level of quality there, adding a lot of useful features, and they seem to be very serious about investing in it and supporting lots of different users coming from lots of different frameworks, technologies, working on different types of applications. So it's really trying to have a broad reach, which is ambitious, of course, but. Uh, it, they're clearly serious about it, and it was a big feature of Werner Focal's keynote at reInvent. So, it it kind of bodes well. And oh yeah, on the, on that topic, then there was um, uh, at the keynote, Ali Spittle was on and talking about mm -hmm. the Amplify Studio, and I suppose that's what we're here to talk about. So I know what last year we had uh, um, Amplify Admin UI, and now we've got Amplify Studio. So what does Amplify Studio give you that we didn't have before? Yeah, I think the most impressive thing that, that was added is the ability to easily collaborate with designers through Figma integrations. Yeah. Basically, what you can do, I was playing with this a little bit yesterday, 
you could, as part of your Amplify project, you could have a um, Figma project. You could, you can, for instance, download a template that you get from AWS to easily get started. Mm -hmm. But then you design all your components in Figma and you have a process that allows you to synchronize those components back into Amplify as React components. Of course, these React components are in a way immutable, like you are not supposed to change the code because again, if the designer changes some details, they will be resynchronized, so all your changes will be overridden. But I suppose you can wrap those components with components that will provide all the additional business logic. It is still a little bit limited, meaning there are things that are missing, like, I don't know, uh, pagination was one that mm. wasn't obvious how, how you could build it, or routing, like it's not obviously described how would we'll you build the routing in this. Probably, again, you need to wrap the components with your own custom components. So I think it's not perfect yet, but mm -hmm. it's impressive to see First of all, that there is a collaboration at that level with something like Figma, so mm -hmm. which is a well-recognized industry tool. So AWS, rather than building their own UI uh, yeah, designing yeah. tool, I guess, they, they decided to create this collaboration. Smart. And it's actually very smoothly integrated. Like you don't have to do, I don't know, weird permission screen or stuff like that. Yeah. It's very intuitively how you connect the two. Um, but yeah, it seems like there is still a long way to go to actually make it really powerful so that you can build more complicated applications with that. Yeah, it seems like you still need a, you need to know what you're doing and you need to know your way around a React app. So it's still kind of aimed at uh, front-end developers and it's, it's still React only, right? So even though Amplify um, supports lots of different front-end frameworks, including Angular and Vue and Ionic, mm -hmm. Uh, various and and as well mobile front ends so it supports flutter you can do native mm -hmm. or react native so um who who is it aimed at then so what what kind of users is this something for everybody or is it aimed at you know people like you meant you seem to mention you know people just getting started doing personal applications does it have broader appeal is it would you use it for an application that you expect to be around for five years yeah that's an interesting question i guess it depends on how standard i'm gonna say is your application and by that i mean i don't know is it just managing crud type of data so you can just define your entities and then you just need to have easy ways to i don't know create update delete i think if that's your use case probably you can get a long way with amplify for the features you get right now mm -hmm. i i can also see more sophisticated use cases where I don't know, maybe you have data models that are more dynamic or where you need to have, I don't know, integrations maybe with external services where maybe Amplify, it it will be, maybe you'll need to work around, let's say, the limitations of Amplify and maybe the solution is not going to come so easily. Maybe it will become more as a blocker than as an enabler in that case. But definitely, I don't know, I can see it being very useful for either an MVP where you just want to prototype something very, very quickly mm -hmm. to see if it makes sense as a business or if you're doing a small side project or a personal utility application where, I mean, you are not opening it up to a big public. You are just you just need something that works for a specific need that you might have. Probably amplifies a big win because will give you a much faster time to actually using the product. Um, I am a little bit skeptical, skeptical on enterprise type of applications, mainly because there are some important missing features. For instance, the ability to deploy into a private network, mm -hmm. a private VPC, yeah. Yeah, or great. SAML authentication is another thing that mm -hmm. it wasn't obvious how to do it. Maybe it is possible, mm -hmm. but the default authentication system doesn't seem to provide an option for that. So maybe, again, something you could bend Amplify to be able to mm -hmm. achieve, but it doesn't seem easily supported actually this is an area where i think amplify could really win if they added a few features like that because i can see lots of enterprises out there who are struggling to get the time and the people to be able to build custom applications for you know line of business applications um, or applications that integrate existing data sources so i think if you have like ad integration for authentication internal hosting, like you say, and the ability to integrate into some existing APIs and integrate systems together in a lightweight way with adding, 
you know, some of these features like storage and, and, and data behind them, I think you could end up with something really powerful that would be adopted and, and gain a lot of popularity in enterprise. So while it might feel like something that's you know, suitable for startups or for people building the MVP of a SaaS application, I think that's actually where it could really shine in the future if, if we get those, those kind of features. Mm-hmm. Do, do, is there anything else that you can see kind of in the future direction of Amplify then? Because I, I guess I feel, as, as you alluded to, with these UI components that have recently been an, announced, it's like giving you that automated front-end capability in collaboration with designers. It, it kind of feels like it's just the start, though. You can't build a full UI application automatically with Amplify yet. But is that where it's going? I, I would expect, yeah, this to be definitely one of the next milestones for the Amplify team to allow um, designers and developers to work together even more closely by defining not just the, the shape of the components, but also how the components come together and the interactions between the components. So again, yeah, navigation, uh, sign up, pagination, all mm-hmm. these kind of things. I think they will come uh, in, in the next releases. But also we probably mentioned that already Right now, you can only uh, integrate with the data models that you define in Amplify, or at least in an easy way. Mm. I think it might make sense for Amplify to also show uh, easy way to also integrate with data sources that are not in your Amplify project, for instance, other APIs that maybe exist in your enterprise or other external APIs, or even things that are not classically exposed through a REST or a GraphQL API. Maybe you just want to interact with I don't know, even a SOAP system, yep. right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. in an enterprise, I can definitely see that still happening a lot. Some, so some random might FTP nice server. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, th- those things will make it amplify closer, I suppose, to a low code type of solution. Yeah, that's really interesting. You know, I think this is, uh, we're probably getting to, getting to the end of our time here and going a little over as usual. But I think one of the, things that I feel about this is that from your perspective and my perspective, you know, we're coming looking at Amplify from our existing bias of understanding, you know, how to use CloudFormation and we've got a comfort level with AWS that just comes from using it over over the course of many years. But that's probably we're probably not the primary target audience for Amplify. So really interested to know what other people are doing with it. So this is one where user feedback and listener feedback is really going to help us to kind of shape how we talk about this kind of thing in future. So if people have used Amplify either to build applications from scratch or to augment existing applications, maybe you're doing something really interesting and quirky with Amplify, we'd love us we'd love you to give us a, a message on Twitter or mm-hmm. in the comments on YouTube and let us know what you think and we'd we'd really like to follow up on it. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, we don't have to cover it all in this episode. Um so please, and also please share it if you know other people using Amplify, um, share share links to the podcast and um, make sure to follow and subscribe because we'll, we'll come back to this in the future, I feel, because there's, I feel like there's definitely a lot more to happen. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Thanks very much for listening, everybody. And we'll talk to you on the next episode of AWS. Bye. Bye. Bye.